Hey everyone, it's George Carlos. I want to welcome you to Lead Moment Short Stories on Education and Leadership. Thanks for watching. When I was a kid, I was deathly terrified of our principal. Not that there weren't great principals, but back at the time when I went to school, a lot of the thinking behind when you would get sent to the office is that you would get in actually huge trouble. And so you'd see a lot of yelling, kids getting, you know, uh, reamed out and, and things like that. And so it was terrifying. And, and you know, as we watch kids grow up, um, this is kind of the narrative of school. You get sent to the principal's office, you get in huge trouble, and then you get sent back and, and hopefully you won't do it again. Um, but I wanted to change the approach in the way that I was thinking and how kids perceived uh, the principal's office. So a lot of times what I really focused on was getting to meet kids before they came to meet me. So if they were sent to trouble, I would want to never start a conversation with, what's your name again? And so do I connect with them? Do I find these kids before time? Do I spend time during lunch, um, you know, during recess, going in their classroom so they know who I am and I know who they are? I think this is really crucial in the role of principal. And, and I really made an effort every single day to get into every classroom and see every teacher and every kid because that's who I serve. And so when I actually looked at um, when kids get sent to the office, when they were in trouble for something serious, instead of like yelling at them and getting really upset and, and scolding them and giving them a list of consequences, I simply asked two questions. The first question was, why are you here? The reason I asked this question is so that the focus doesn't get on me and me telling them what they've done wrong, but they start really emphasizing and focusing on themselves and understanding um, their actions and what they did. The other little benefit of this that people don't really realize is that sometimes they tell you things you don't really know because they don't know what you know, which is kind of awesome, right? And so you would actually have these kids talk to it and I would wait patiently. If they wouldn't say anything at the beginning, I would just say, you know what, we're going to wait till you're ready to talk and I need you to tell me why you're here. So this, this always worked. There was never a time where, it, like, you know, sometimes it would take, you know, one minute, sometimes it would take an hour, but eventually they would talk about what they did, and the focus is on their own actions. And then after they talked about it, and they went through the process, um, then I would ask the follow-up question. What would you do if you were at me? You know, and they know I'm in a position of authority. And a lot of times what was interesting is they would say things that were way harsher than any consequence I could have ever given. And so we would kind of work backwards from there and we would talk about this. What I'm trying to teach these kids is to take ownership for their actions, to understand how do they work their ways out. Because I'm not only trying to, I'm not trying to be a, you know, an officer giving them a consequence for a rule they've broken. I want them to learn how to navigate these things as well. And sometimes, a lot of times actually, they would actually walk out of my office crying and I said nothing. I really said nothing because they would own it. They would feel what they did. And I think this is a really crucial idea is actually how do we teach these kids not only to be better learners, but to be better people. And how do we, you know, teach them moving forward how to do this? And and people will challenge me, say, wow, that's, you know, how come they're not, they're not doing, you know, as hard as I went to school and look how I turned out. It's not that my expectations are low. In fact, they're a lot higher in the sense that I don't want to be the person to follow them around for the rest of their lives, getting them out of jams. I expect them to learn how to do this on their own. And so this is an extremely crucial aspect, is how do you help the kid figure out their own ways through this process? And one little extra tidbit. One of the things that I would do when these kids would actually determine their consequences, they would talk about their actions, when we were in the office, and we would do this privately, we would call their parents and say, hey, your your child is here with me right now, and they're gonna tell you about something that happened today. So then, so there's no miscommunication at home. The child would actually go through while I'm sitting there, and they know I'm listening, so it was very clear. And then after that time, <clears throat> I would actually talk to their parents. And you know, we would talk about this, and sometimes they were extremely upset. And what I wanted to know is that the, the child knows they've done something wrong. They figured out, you know, how to move forward with this. But we we care about them. And I know that a lot of times we make phone calls home. Uh, parents are so worried because they don't feel that their child is valued or, you know, <clears throat> they've done something wrong and will look down upon them. And I wanted them to feel that we understand kids make mistakes and there's consequences for those mistakes, but we're, we're always there for them. And I think this is really crucial going through this process. So hopefully this helps you moving forward.